Hello students, we are back with another video and uh, today uh, we have brought a new video for you. In this video we will study uh, the book of class 10th and the book name is English First Flight. This is, uh, this is the first book, there are two books in English in class 10. So today we will study the first flight and then the chapter 1, A Letter to God. So let's get started. So students, uh, here is the book, as you can see, and this is the first chapter. So before we get started, we should, we should have a glimpse of the story. So this story is about trust and faith in God and humanity, helping others and charity. So this is the theme of the story. The writer of this story is Mr. G. L. Fluence. Now we come to the characters of the story. So these are the person. So the main character is Lencho, who is a farmer. His wife, his elder sons, his younger sons, a postman and a postmaster. So now we are going to read the story and we will understand what this story is all about. As soon as you turn the first page, you can see you have been given an activity. What this activity is all about? We should learn. It will take you back uh, in the duration of 1990 to 2000. In this decade, between these 10 years, there were very few banks and that too they were situated only in urban areas, only in cities. There were some rural areas, uh, some villages, uh, they were not having the facility of a bank. Now, for the people, there was a major concern how to send the money. In that time, there was only means to send the money was the post office through the money order. It was the only means to send the money to friends, to relatives. So, in this activity you have been told to go to the post office, buy a money order form, then fill in the details in block letters, whom you are sending, what is the amount and all other things. Then you have to uh, give it to the counter along with the money and other charges. In the second page, you can see this is the sample given of a money order form. So this was the activity. Now we are getting back to the story. So let's get started. First we will read the first paragraph, then we will understand the concept and then we will go for the graphs by paragraphs. The house, the only one in the entire valley, sat on the crest of a low hill. From this height, one could see the river and the field of ripe corn dotted with the flowers that always promised a good harvest. Earth needed was a down. Throughout the morning, Lencho, Lencho, the person, the farmer. Throughout the morning, Lencho, who knew his fields, intimately had done nothing else but see the sky towards the northeast. So first you need to understand there is a beautiful place, there is a beautiful site, there is a valley, there is a, a, a crest, a peak you can say on a little height and on that peak, on that crest there is a small hut, there is a small house. Whose house? It is Lento. The view, uh, the scenery from that place is very beautiful. There's a river, there's a field uh, which has uh, corns. And what else is there? There are flowers, there are fields, and the hills, the valleys. It is very, very beautiful. Now, the only thing Lencho wants 
is some rain for irrigation and for this purpose he always he has been always looking to the sky towards the north east direction so in this paragraph towards are there downpour and shower they are referred as rain so this was the first paragraph now we are going in the second paragraph now we are really going to get some water woman the woman who was preparing supper replied yes god willing the older boys were working in the field while the smaller ones were playing near the house until the woman called them come for dinner it was during the meal that just as lenchu had predicted big drops of rain began to fall in the northeast huge mountains of clouds could be seen approaching the air was fresh and sweet the man went out for no other reason than to have the pleasure of feeling the rain on his body and when he returned he exclaimed these aren't rain drops falling from the sky they are new coins the big drops are 10 cent pieces and the little ones are fives so this was the second paragraph in this paragraph lencho said to his wife the only thing we need is rain if it rains we will have a good amount of uh, coins his wife is preparing dinner uh, combinedly in the first line it is written supper and in the last line it is written dinner so so, so you can consider it uh, dinner because it is in daytime as it is written some of his sons some of his uh, elder sons they are working in the field so we work during the daytime and the younger children they are playing near the house so the dinner is prepared the woman lencho's wife called them for dinner and suddenly what lencho had predicted what lencho had imagined about the rain it happens suddenly the he sees the uh, clouds from coming uh, from the northeast and it started raining lencho was filled with joy he was very very happy in happiness in joy he exclaimed that these are not rain drops these are not rain they are money they are money falling from the sky so he said the big drops they are 10 cents in india it is called paise 10 paise or 10 cents and the little ones they are fives he was very happy as he, he as he imagined as he prayed a lot for the rain and it began to rain so now we are going in the third paragraph with a satisfied expression he regarded the field of ripe corn with its flowers draped in a curtain of rain but suddenly a strong wind began to blow and along with the rain very large hailstones began to fall so students please note down is a word the hailstones in hindi it is called ola vrishti or it is also called frozen pearls sometimes with the rain it it falls down it is a little balls of ice what happens next so uh, very large hailstones begin to fall i referred the hailstone it is frozen pearls in hindi it is called ola vrishti these truly did resemble new silver coins the boys exposing themselves to the rain ran out to collect the frozen pearls now this is a very tragic and sad moment for lencho he only prayed he only predicted the rain but with the rain the frozen pearls are coming and this will destroy the crop this will destroy the harvest although now it is truly looking as silver coins the children who were playing outside the house they were very happy they ran out of the house and they started collecting all the frozen pearls but lencho for him it was very 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 sad moment now we are going next uh, paragraph it's really getting bad now exclaimed the man i hope it passes quickly it did not pass quickly 
For an hour, the hail rained on the house, the garden, the hillside, the cornfield, on the whole valley. The field was white, as if covered with salt. Now, Lencho started praying, Oh God, let it pass quickly. Please don't let it happen for a long time, because if it does, it will ruin the whole harvest. But it, uh, it continued for a long time and the entire valley, the entire field, everything was filled with the frozen pearls. As if, as if it was looking like somebody poured the huge amount of salt on the entire valley. Next paragraph, not a leaf remained on the trees. The corn was totally destroyed. The flowers were gone from the plants. Lencho's soul was filled with sadness. When the storm had passed, he stood in the middle of the field and said to his sons, A plague of locust. Here, locust is referred as an insect that ruins your harvest. A plague of locusts would have left more than this. The hail has left nothing. This year we will have no corn. That night was a sorrowful one. All our work for nothing. There is no one who can help us. We will all go hungry this year. So as I said, the farming of corn is the only occupation for Lencho. He worked in the field, he grew corns, he sold to the market, he gathered money and then this is how he was running and managing his house and his wife, children and family. So now due to the frozen pearls, due to the hailstones, the entire harvest is removed. His heart was filled with sadness and sorrow. As we can read in the paragraph, he has nothing else remaining. No deposits, no saving. The biggest worry at the moment was how they will spend their life for next year because they don't have anything extra to do. They don't have any kind of another occupation. So Lencho was very very worried and he also referred a kind of insect that is locust. This insect, they, they fly in the group, they eat the crops and they leave the fields. So he said, uh, like, uh, these insects are better than uh, this situation. Even they have, they have uh, left lots of uh, uh, harvest. But this hailstone has ruined everything, nothing is left. So uh, this is the paragraph. It describes how the uh, how the valley, the trees, the plants, the flower, everything was covered with the frozen pearls, the hailstone, and nothing is left. Wherever you go, wherever you see, in any direction, you can see only white frozen pearls. So now we are going to the next paragraph. But in the hearts of all who lived in that solitary house in the middle of the valley there was single hope help from God so the only hope that is remaining is help from God nothing else no human can help in this situation so that Lencho can come out and he can earn some money the only hope uh, the only expectation is from God don't be so upset, even though this seems like a total loss, remember, no one dies of hunger. That's all what they say, no one dies of hunger. So, all through the night, Lencho thought only of uh, his one hope, the help of God, whose eyes, as he had been instructed, see everything, even what is deep in one's conscience. Lencho was an ox of a man, walking like an animal in the fields, but still he knew how to write. The following Sunday, 
At daybreak, he began to write a letter which he himself would carry to tongue and place in the mail. It was nothing less than a letter to God. So his wife is making him understand, she is consoling him that don't be upset. There is God who takes care of everyone and he doesn't let anyone sleep hungry. So there is one hope, there is one God who, who, who will take care of us. So that night Lencho couldn't sleep but in the morning what he decided, he decided to write a letter to God although he was a farmer and uh, there's a, a concept, there's a stereotype in all of our mind that the person who works in the field is illiterate, doesn't know how to read, how to write but in this case it is described, it is worth mentioning that despite of being a farmer Lencho knows how to write well. So he started writing a letter. He went to the post office to drop it. So the following Sunday, the next Sunday, he wrote the letter and he went to the town, the city, uh, to the post office. Next paragraph, God, he wrote, if you don't help me, my family and I will go hungry this year. I need a hundred pesos, that means hundred cents, in order to sow my field again and to live until the crop comes because the hair is torn. So what he wrote in the letter that dear God, please help us, we don't have any kind of another occupation. So we are totally dependent on the fields which is now ruined by the hair stones or frozen pearls. So please send me hundred pesos, hundred cents. So that I can spend one year and I can grow the crops, grow the corns again. He wrote in the envelope, if you know how to write a letter and how the envelope looks like, you can find out there is a place, there are some lines in which we write the address of the person whom we are sending the letter. So at that, at that place he wrote, to God. Put the letter inside and still troubled went to town at the post office he placed a stamp on the letter and dropped it into the mailbox so he was still he was very confused but somehow he wrote the letter in the address column he wrote to god and he went to the town to drop it in the mailbox in the mailbox it is like a, a red color red colored kind of a drum you can say in which we drop the letter what he did, as of now, he, he wrote the letter, he dropped in the letter box and he came back. What happens next? One of the employees, who was a postman and also helped at the post office, went to his boss, laughing heartily and showed him a letter to God. Never in his career as a postman had he known that address. The postmaster, a fat, amiable, fellow also broke out laughing but almost immediately he turned serious and tapping the letter on his desk commented what faith I wish I had the faith of the man who wrote this letter starting up a correspondence with God the letter which Lencho had dropped in the letter box was found by a postman he saw the letter and he found it very funny. In his entire life, in his entire career, he had never seen somebody who was writing a letter to God. So it was his first letter or something like that. He picked out the letter and he took it to his boss who was a postmaster. He was a fat but he was a very friendly person. He showed it. A moment ago, the postman was laughing very much. Then he showed the letter to the postmaster, the, his boss. He was also laughing very much. But suddenly what happens, he realized that who is this person? He is having so much trust and faith in God that he wrote the letter to God. At that point, he became very serious. And he thought there is something, there is something in this person. He is communicating, he is trying to uh, develop a communication between 
God and Him. So now what happens in next paragraph? So in order not to shake the writer's faith in God, the postmaster came up with an idea. Answer the letter. But when he opened it, it was evident that to answer it, he needed something more than goodwill, ink and paper. But he stuck to his resolution. He asked for money from his employees. He himself gave part of his salary and several friends of his were obliged to give something for an act of charity. So now, what he thought, the postmaster, that this trust and faith in God shouldn't be broken. He read the letter and tried to reply it. But there is something else that is needed in the reply. Apart from ink, paper, pen and writing, it needed some money to be sent to Lencho. But it was a big amount. So the postman the postmaster, these two persons, they were not enough to send this sum of money. What they did, they planned together in the uh, post office, they talked to all the staffs, all the colleagues and they started collecting the money so that they can send to Lencho. So uh, up to now, I was talking about the theme of the story. So you saw up to now, trust and faith in God, humanity, what the postmaster and the postman and other employees they are doing, they are helping others and now they are going to give some charity so that they can send some money to Lencho. So although uh, somehow they collected some sort of money to so that they can send to Lencho. So they contributed some of the part of their salary as a charity or you can say donation but despite of collecting this much of money it was still impossible for him to gather uh, together the to gather together the hundred pesos all together combinedly they cannot uh, they cannot collect this sum of 100 100 pesos so he was able to send the farmer only a little more than half that means uh, more than only a little more than 50 pesos he put the money in an envelope addressed to lencho with a with it uh, uh, a letter envelope addressed to lencho and containing only single word the signature signature of god so in the reply nothing was written only there was a signature of god and along with the letter there was a uh, little more than 50 pesos but lencho was demanding what happens next? The following Sunday, Lencho came a bit earlier than usual to ask if there was a letter for him. It was the postman himself who handed the letter to him while the postmaster, experiencing the contentment of a man who has performed a good deed, looked on from his office. So the postman was sitting in his office, sorry the postmaster, the boss, he was sitting in the office and he was looking outside the window where the lencho and the postman they were talking. The postman was ha handing over the letter and lencho came, actually lencho was very excited, he was very anxious, he came for the search of reply, is there any reply from God, I, I wrote the letter. So the postman handed him over the letter and all this scenario he was uh, watching. Uh, the the postmaster the boss was watching so he was thinking the post the postmaster that i have done such a good deed so he wanted to experience how that person how lencho uh, reacted how he feels uh, so uh, he wanted to saw all these things so he was peeping out from the window sitting inside his cabin Lencho showed not the slightest surprise on seeing the money. Such was his confidence. But he became angry when he counted the money. God could not have made a mistake, nor would he have denied Lencho what he had requested. So despite of being thankful, Lencho got angry. 
Why? Because he demanded 100 pesos and in the letter it was only a little more than 50. So he, he got very angry. He thought that God had made some mistake. That's why it is less or there are some sort of uh, confusion in this system. The, the post office he was talking about. So he was doubting the uh, the employees also and sometimes he was thinking that it is the mistake of God because I demanded 100 and in reply I got only a little more than 50. Immediately Lencho went up to the window to ask for a paper and ink. On the public writing table he started to write with much wrinkling of his brow caused by the effort he had to make to express his ideas. When he finished, he went to the window by a stamp which he licked and then affixed to the envelope with a blow of his fist. The moment the letter fell into the mailbox, the postmaster went to open it. It said, God, of the money that I asked for, only 70 pesos reached me. Send me the rest since I need it very much but don't send it to me through the mail because the post office employees are a bunch of crooks Lenjo. So in anger he got very angry saying it was only only 70 pesos. He went to the counter again and he again he wrote a letter to God. What he writes in the letter? God you must have made a mistake so send me the money again as I demanded that is 100 pesos and this time do not send it through the mail or through the post office send me directly because these guys are not good they, they must have uh, done something wrong with the money that's why it is 70 pesos so this time send me the money directly don't send it through the post office so they all, uh, the uh, uh, post office staffs, they were all surprised to see this. They were thinking that we have helped this person this much and now he is blaming us. He wrote the letter and said right then, the, the postman picked it up, he opened it and he read it aloud uh, in front of the postmaster. So they were all surprised and in very much angry uh, expression he wrote the letter and all these things the postmaster and the postman, they both were watching. <laughs> so here the story ended. So students, I hope you enjoyed it. And now what is your work? If you have any kind of doubt or any kind of confusion, you can write it in the comment box. Or if you want to ask something, you can also write that. And thank you very much for watching our videos. And uh, please do subscribe uh, our channel like our videos and share it and if you have any kind of question or suggestion feedback you can also write in the comment box thank you very much stay tuned